Hello, everybody. Welcome to Todd and Shane's Cloudy Podcast, episode 447, recorded live January 8th, 2020. Well, we've decided we're going to call it 2020, right? That's... Yeah, I think so, right? Because we one of our Facebook friends adamantly said we were not allowed to do that. Yep, uh, Mike Fitzmorris, the, uh, the 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 famous Mike Fitzmorris. I, I think he said something like he would unfriend you and shave your not, not he wouldn't shave your dog. He likes dogs too much, but yeah, he felt very strongly that we should never say 2020 that it should always be 2020. Yeah, you know, I so on that note, completely random. But one of my friends was posting. I guess there's already been a bunch of fraud around people like signing stuff as, you know, one three twenty, and then people changing and just appending to the end of that. 17 or 19 or whatever. So I've seen those. I've seen the warnings, but I've never seen it actually happen. It seems like one of those things that, you know, shark attacks or something that everybody's worried about, but hasn't actually happened. I no, it's on Facebook, Todd. It must be true. <laughs> the internet never lies. Yeah. Uh, but yes, first, a uh, first podcast, of 2020, uh, Mark Christman, one of our longtime regulars. Um, he's probably been here more than Shane or I have, uh, it's been so long since we've done one of these. Even he has forgotten uh, when and where it was. So that's uh, that. That speaks to how long it's been. Just with the, the holidays being on Wednesdays, you know, Christmas and New Year's and all that. It's just been uh, been a crazy few months. It has. It's been uh, right. And the, and the fact that we both like actually work. The last, <laughs> like, 2019 was the year that we both like actually did work. So that was and, the other and, big problem. And stayed busy. I had a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah. yeah. I can tell you that 2020 does not look any better at the moment. <laughs> Good problem to have, I yeah. suspect. So, yeah, I, I've fallen behind on the production. I tried to use the new version of Camtasia, but it made the video files that were really big. So I just need to go back into the old version of Camtasia and stick with the process that worked. And so did you figure out why the files were so big? or I didn't. I didn't spend any time on it. I, yeah. I'm, go ahead. I was gonna say I changed so long ago, like I, I wouldn't even know where to go to check to see if my file size has got bigger or not when I made the move. You, uh, so I, I'm less worried about the sizes themselves because the MP3 is going to be the MP3. When I upload it to YouTube, they're going to do whatever. Um, I'm, I'm mostly worried about what, what problems I'm introducing, like why the file is bigger. I'm not so much worried about the file itself being bigger, but I'm, I'm worried why it's bigger, but maybe, uh, yeah, sometime we might have to offline look at my settings and see what I'm, I'm doing wrong. Yeah, Cause the new version also added MP3s again, right? Then they put, did they put that back in. They did, I think, but I didn't like it. Okay. Uh, I have to look into it and I can make MP3s out of WAV files. I'm not so worried about that. Um, I can script that because that, that's that's really you know the, what I'm where I'm at now is I want more ability to script things. So if there's an extra step, that sucks. But if I can script it, then I don't care. Um, so that's um, yeah. So for me, Jeff, the version that's not working is the 2020 version. The version that was working is an old version, uh, eight, Camtasia Studio eight. Yeah, because after eight, they took away MP3, so Todd didn't move up then. And yep. So off, so forth. Yeah. I, on the other hand, use Camtasia. It feels like every day of my life. And so I'm on 2019. I don't think I... Yeah, I'm on 2019 too. Okay, there's not a 2019. There's... Is there a 2020 version? I don't know. Not Jeff's ass now. I'm like, why don't I have the latest? Causing me... So that's... So I'll, I'll, I should look into that this week. Uh, uh, the other thing that I have for our notes for the production uh, part of this is we are still doing... Uh, the charity drive right now. So Lori is busy. She cannot join us this week. Is she reveling in her birthday fun, probably? She's, uh, yes, uh, traveling about and uh, en enjoying life as a, a newly minted, uh, however old she is. And uh, But my birthday is uh, just coming up here in a couple of weeks. And so if you would like to join us in our charity drive, you can go to LoriGowan.com, and it will take you to the charity page. And again, we're not asking for anybody to give to a specific charity. This isn't some crazy backwater thing where it's the Todd Clint Charitable Foundation, and I'm skimming off the top to, uh, you know, better myself. Really, what we're our, our only purpose is to encourage you to give to any charity, a charity of your choice, whatever thing is important to you. And we just kind of want to do that and, and get the numbers and... So give to something that makes you feel good. 
And this is the time of the year where I can put you boycott your giving charity because I refuse to participate. So, <laughs> and I can't remember why. What what was the problem? It's I, I don't remember. You, yeah, you, I, it's, you're, it's you're not a meanie. I, I I forget. Uh, but yeah, so we got that going for a couple more weeks till uh, till my birthday. And we'll uh, we'll look at that. So for topics, we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, and we talked a little bit about the show before the show. But I have uh, have a bunch of stuff to talk about. Yeah, you. Uh, this is the most I think you've ever put in. Definitely I'm a most chatty. you put in in 2020. I'm a, yes, I, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, so one of the first things, and this was kind of some stuff I saw running around in Twitter, but it's something I've been playing with for the last couple of months, is Microsoft is redoing Edge. We knew about that. Edge yep. came out with Windows 10, and it was horrible, and everybody said it was horrible. Even Edge's mom doesn't like Edge. And so a few months ago, Microsoft said they were scrapping Edge. They were going to rebuild it, and they were going to rebuild it on the Chromium engine. And that is going to be coming out here next month. I forget when it's going to go RTM. For those of you using Windows 10, that update will be uh, seamless for you. So you don't have to worry about, uh, make sure you have that. Uh, and like uh, Jeff says in the chat room, uh, that it's being affectionately referred to as Credge. I haven't quite worked that into my vernacular yet, but that's uh, that's what they're calling it. So the reason that I wanted to bring it up is, number one, I, I've been using the beta for a while, and there are several beta channels. There's the dev channel and the preview channel and all that. I've honestly forgotten which one I'm in because it's been going on for so long. But since it's built on top of Chrome, there's a lot of things that I'm used to using in Chrome. Chrome is my browser of choice right now. And I wanted to, to mention a couple of things as people make the move to Edge and might actually start using Edge because it doesn't suck. Uh, a couple of things that I like about it. So working with Office 365 and any other kind of web things, you end up having multiple logins for the same URLs. Go to office.com. I've got my personal one. I've got my work one. I've got customer ones. The way that I've handled that in the past with Chrome is to have separate identities inside of Chrome. So in the upper right-hand corner, you can do that. And Chromium Edge has that same functionality. So I've been doing that as well for a while. And it, it works exactly the same way that it does in Chrome. So there's no new tricks to learn there. But it does add one nice thing that I like that, that, Edge, that Chrome doesn't have. So you can have multiple identities, and that works fine. If you sign in to Google, and by that I mean Gmail or Google or YouTube or any of the Google properties, sign in with a Gmail address in that identity, it will sync a bunch of properties of that to your identity up in the cloud. So if you go to another machine, and sign in with that same account, your bookmarks come down, your passwords come down, your autofill comes down, all of that. And Chromium Edge also inherits that. What makes that super exciting though is on Chrome, the only identity that you can do the sync with is a Gmail account. And so I have a Gmail account of my own, so that made that one easier. I had to create one for my work accounts so that I could sync that around on machines, but for all my customer accounts and all that, I don't do it because I don't want to have all those Gmail accounts. The Chromium Edge, version also lets you use uh, a Azure AD accounts for that. So when I open up my account, I've got my home account and I sign in to Office or whatever, it takes that AAD account and that's the account that it uses to sync. So obviously since I'm doing this for Office 365, every one of those accounts has an AAD account. So they all sync automatically on those accounts. So I don't have to create Gmail accounts for them. That's the good part. The bad part is it's kind of broken. <laughs> Yeah. So, and I talked to the, the team at uh, Ignite about this because I'm super excited about looking at it and having all that syncing is really the thing that's keeping me from, from going over. So I learned a couple of new tricks and this works with Chrome or Edge. There are internal URLs. So if you go to Chrome colon slash slash and type sync dash internals, it will tell you what's going on with that syncing. So it'll say your syncing is, you know, todd.clint at gmail.com. Here's what I'm syncing. Here's the last time I looked, all the, the things around that. You can also do that with Edge. So with the new Chromium Edge, you can go to edge colon slash slash sync dash internals and see the same thing. And so right now, if your if uh, Chromium Edge supports syncing with an AAD account or the, the Microsoft account, so like a Hotmail, Outlook.com, whatever, everything works with the Hotmail and the Outlook.com accounts. So that all works fine. If you sign in with an Azure AD account, your bookmarks don't sync. Everything else seems to sync. Your preferences, your passwords, your autofill, all that. But your bookmarks don't sync, which is 
95% of the reason that I want it to sync is so that all my bookmarks stay in sync. So I discovered that before at Ignite. I talked to one of the guys on the team and he said, basically what it comes down to is they're trying to figure out a secure place in the Microsoft uh, cloud to save that stuff. Mm -hmm. And initially they were doing it uh, with, with part of Azure that required an Azure uh, premium account. So if you just had an Office 365 account, that didn't work. And they're trying to get all that working in the background. Um, but he assures me that that's their goal. Their goal will be that an Azure AD account, a free Azure AD account with Office 365 or just Azure AD Basic will be able to sync everything. Once that gets going, I think I'll probably just switch over to Chromium Edge for good. Yeah, I, um, I, I've i been waiting on the Chromium Edge, right? I did not feel like, because everything I do in life is, you know, is Power Apps and Flows, which is all browser-based and, Basically, Chrome was the browser, the best browser. So I'm like, I'm not going to fiddle with a new browser. But when you uh, when you give me the gr the green light that uh, <laughs> Credge is ready for me, because the the product team kind of keeps being you know leading. They, they've they've been updated. They they've been leading with Chrome, the Chrome based Edge or whatever they call. It. They have some official name. But when yeah yeah, I talk to those guys. They're always you know. Are you using, and that's the first browser out of their mouth, and then Chrome is the second. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course it's Chrome. You know that. Yeah. Um, and it's, the browsers of the world, it's still shocking, right? Because uh, there's so many people that still use Internet Explorer, and that thing doesn't work worth a damn. Horrible. Yep. Horrible, right? But there's still so many people using that we run into. Firefox has mostly went away. I haven't run into anyone using Firefox in a long time, so I don't know. Yeah, so uh, Jeff uh, Hicks in the chat room mentions Brave, which is also based on Chromium, uh, that you can do the same thing. So uh, one of the, the, the places I've been keeping up to date on this, I, I used to uh, email the team like every week, hey, do you got it fixed yet? Hey, do you got it fixed yet? <laughs> uh, and they were pretty cool about it. They were, they, were, they were decent about it. But then I found out there's a, a URL you can go to where they basically have the known issues and what's new and all that. So, so I'll put the notes in the... the the, the the podcast notes, the URL. But if you go to Microsoft Edge Insider dot com, that's the official that's where you sign up to get in the dev channel and all that. There's a what's new link and it's still it has a thing, known issue, favorite sync is still unavailable, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's it's a good little browser. It's it's Microsoft has definitely taken the good things about Chromium and added more good things for us Microsoft centric folks. So yeah, hopefully they don't, you know, hopefully five years from now they haven't added so many good things that it's slow again. But Yeah, yeah. And, and we, I could I'll probably do a whole episode on all the stuff that, uh, that the Chromium Edge adds. But it's it, it's pretty good. I recommend, especially for folks that are listening to this and are Microsoft-centric, at least try it out and get familiar with it. Because I know for some of our corporate customers, they like this idea of the syncing and everything being based on Azure AD, and they're going to move to it. And so we're going to have to at least know what the, the quirks are, even if we don't use it in our, uh, our everyday lives. Yeah, as long as good old SharePoint Online can handle it. Yep. Yep. And this leads me into my next topic. I was, uh, I think Rod Trent, who is a, he used to be a, a journalist, now he works for Microsoft, tweeted something yesterday that just kind of scared the pants off of me. And it is that the new versions of Chrome, and so I assume Edge will be uh, impacted by this as well, uh, but the new versions of Chrome change how cookies are handled, trying to make them more safe. You know, we, we like that. A lot of uh, websites abuse cookies. And starting with the, the the beta of build 79 and what will be the regular uh, behavior in release 80, when these cookie updates change, it basically breaks everything that, around signing in and signing out. So there's a whole list of things, uh, what the impact is going to be when it comes out. But it's things like uh, can't sign into Office 365 can't sign out of Office 365. Uh, Teams doesn't work if you do this. Uh, you know, uh, Azure portal fails if you do that. Power BI gets stuck doing this. And it's going to be terrible. So there's a Microsoft support article about it that I, I put in the chat room and I'll, I'll put out there. But boy, is this going to be rough. So hopefully Microsoft will get this all fixed before that becomes widespread. But if you start having some crazy uh, login problems, Check out the build of Chrome you're using. I just looked, and as soon as I close Chrome, it's going to 79. <laughs> like it didn't, it didn't ask me. It didn't ask me if I cared. It just, I went to about, and it's like, oh, re relaunch the browser to get to version 79. I'm like, no, I can't relaunch the browser. 
Yep. Uh, Jeff Hicks is saying that um, California had some new uh, personal protection laws, kind of like GDPR, go into effect on January 1st, and it's probably in relationship to that. Probably, probably so. Oh, imagine that California screwing it up for the rest of us. Uh, they're 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 all they're only ever on the leading edge of that stuff. They uh, and he's saying that New York's going to look at doing it. Europe's already have obviously done it. So I think that's uh, part of the problem. So and it looks like this is slated to be released as a stable version February fourth. So obviously Shane's going to get it a little sooner. I don't know what version <laughs> I'm on right now. Yeah, why am I lucky? Just lucky. I am running. I'm already running version 79, so apparently I'm going to start having problems. Oh no! As soon as I went to the thing, it's <laughs> yes. As soon as I close it, well, excellent. <laughs> there will be no rebooting for Shane or Todd for a few mm -hmm. weeks. Yep. Good deal. Good deal. I so almost keep rebooted before the show. I'm glad I didn't. I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, check into that. Uh, and the final kind of thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, around this websites and all that was uh over the the holiday weekend between christmas and new year's my wife and i went on vacation we went down to the bahamas for a few days and my beloved iowa state cyclones were in the camping world bowl <laughs> playing playing notre dame and oh and i guess it was the chiefs game actually so they were the iowa state played while we were traveling the the chiefs played on sunday and down in the bahamas the tv stations were based out of Miami, so they were playing the Dolphins game. Yep. Uh, but in, prep, in in expecting that, I noticed, so you and I both use the Ubiquity hardware, access points and routers and all that kind of stuff. The Ubiquity controller has a VPN server built into it. Okay, yep. And so before I left, uh, a week or so before I left, I enabled all of that and, and tested all of that. So oh. what I was able to do, because I switched to YouTube TV, you know, six months ago or whatever, I was able to, on my laptop, get on the internet in the Bahamas, VPN in back to home, and then fire up YouTube TV, and all of the traffic that YouTube TV saw for me looked like it was coming from Ames, and I was able to stream regular TV. I did try it once without that, and the YouTube TV service is not available at all in the Bahamas. So as soon as I opened up my browser and went to tv.youtube.com, it's like, sorry, not available. Hmm. And then hit the VPN, hit the refresh, and then it all came up. I was able to stream everything. It worked like a champ. Interesting. And did you have to install VPN software on? What? I didn't. Oh, yeah, so it uses uh, the built-in Windows 10 client. Okay. And it uses uh, the, the shared key, the pre-shared key stuff. So it's a little different than just typing in your username and a password. I got it working on all of my Windows 10 boxes. It also apparently supports the out-of-the-box Android client, but I can't get it to work on there. And I don't know why. It just says it can't connect. And I assume it would work on your iOS device as well. Interesting. I might, I might uh, you know, in the infinite free time here, I might have to go play with that. It sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah, so part of it is, you know, things like this. Now, I know you don't travel internationally a lot, but I have used YouTube TV when I've been traveling around in the country, and it does figure out where you're at, and then that changes what channels you get. Right, yep. Uh, so this would also, uh, you know, get around that. The other thing is all of the places, well, not all of them, but a lot of the places that we go and get on Wi-Fi, hotels and airports and resorts and that kind of stuff, there's no security key. So it's just, you know, you go to a, a captive portal and then that's how you get in. So having a VPN makes you feel a little more secure about doing those kind of things. Um, so Jeff Hicks is saying, so you and I use the Unify version of the Ubiquity software, and that's kind of the prosumer corporate sort of stuff. Jeff has the Amplify, which is the more consumer version, and it also has that same feature. So glad to see that. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, VPNs make sense. I mean, that's definitely... I assume the NSA or someone's actually the ones that's built all of them, and they're you know just making it easier for them to get my data. But but yeah. kind of like how the Navy built Tor and then uh, then let it out. Um, yeah, and the other thing I was worried about was there are a lot of bottlenecks along the way. So I was going wirelessly to the the internet there. So of course that introduces some some problems. And then I was on an island, a foreign country. So then there was that. And then I took all of those and then bundled them up inside of a VPN. Uh, had no problems watching the game at all. You know. How, how is the internet down there pretty pretty decent? It was so I didn't ever pay for the fast internet. So I just took the free internet, which was I think two megabit, something like that. Uh, wasn't bad, certainly good enough for video. I didn't pay for the higher end stuff, so I don't know how much better it was. Gotcha. But it was uh, but it was good. So that uh, 
that worked out pretty well. And I know, so you, I know you're still on uh, PS View, and I think Mark in the chat room said he was. Um, anybody who's on PlayStation View has to get rid of it because they're closing it down here. <laughs> yep. Momentarily. I mean, it might be this afternoon. I don't know. Uh, YouTube TV, I switched over a few months ago. It's it's worked really well. And, and and I was talking to a buddy of mine, and we were talking about the same deal about what to switch to. And I'm like, the folks at YouTube, man, they know how to stream video across the Internet. Like, they, they got that down. So they it's a much better experience interface-wise and technology-wise. Can't go wrong. No, I was, I mean, I definitely, so yes, I'm going to switch to YouTube TV here by the end of the month because that's, you know, but I've paid up, so I'm not going to, I'm not switching early. I, I'm not getting double billed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I was thinking about this um, this morning, actually. We should probably just do another, like, from scratch uh, cord cutting show. You know, yeah, a lot's changed in the two or three years since we did that yeah. last one. A lot's changed, yeah, and there's still just, you know, we're still with the, just a small percentage of us have done it. You know, we have more and more friends who, like, Oh, I want to do that. And, you know, you say a couple words and they're like, oh, that's too hard. I'm like, it's not, but it's not, it's not. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, that would be a popular episode that we've uh, learned a lot. Certainly I've, I've made a lot of changes to what I did as opposed to what I did two years ago. Yeah. And I, I can't tell you the last time I turned on my Tableau. That's the only piece of it. I really wish I hadn't done, right? I spent a couple hundred bucks on that Tableau that probably shouldn't have, but yeah, I don't use it anymore either. Uh, and the reason, so the reason I don't use it is twofold, not because it's a bad piece of hardware, it, it works fine. Uh, number one, it didn't like my antenna or it didn't like the signal that it got from my antenna and it struggled with that a little bit. And number two, at the time that I got that, I couldn't get some of my local network stations through, yeah. uh, and I, and now I can. Right. So, yeah. No, yeah, it was the only reason I did it. Right. It was just like you and I, luckily I got a $10 antenna to work enough. I yeah. almost bought like a big antenna and I like, dealt with that. And, oh, I've been real mad if I'd done that. So yeah, it. Uh, but I, I so I gave that tableau to a buddy of mine who also cord cut who had the same problems and he's been using it and had no complaints. Very nice of you. Yeah. Um, where are we going next? Do you want to? Um. So I wanted to say a, a couple of quick things. So Bob German, a friend of ours, uh, has a blog. Bob's blog. And man, my copy and paste is doing funny stuff right now. And he uh, put out a uh, a blog post yesterday or the day before on how to build Teams apps with uh, SharePoint pages. And so we all know that Teams is kind of where Microsoft's going with uh, with everything. Yeah. And th this one I thought was particularly good because he shows a couple of different ways to build apps inside of Teams that are based on SharePoint and in a way that doesn't require Visual Studio or the SharePoint framework or any of that kind of crap. Oh. And he provides a great example so you don't even have to do the thing that's easy to do. He uses uh, the, the custom learning or the learning pathways uh, application and how to do it. And he also has another way to do it. There's, a, there's an easy way and an easier way that has an app that does it. So he, he covers both of those. And then for you, he shows how to make a Power App a app inside of Teams and basically publish it so it shows up like a, a native app. So, Yeah, Bob's a great dude, right? He's one of those people. I'm surprised that he talks to us. He just seems like a better... I guess he's such a good human, he feels obligated <laughs> to talk to us, but, but he is yeah. he's a great above us. I, I'm a big fan oh, of him. Oh, he's... he's Far more than a grade above us, uh, yeah. So, so that, so check that out again. If you if you're moving towards teams and are curious how to expose some stuff, it's a great read. Bob's uh, Bob super smart. And uh, so, Bob, I went down to SharePoint Fest in Chicago last month. I just drove down for the day and hung out for a while, and well, went out to dinner with Bob and some other folks. And since we're already talking about Bob, I had had this. He he told me this this great thing that he does as a presenter that I really like. So. He said that he's got a, a USB monitor or USB-C or whatever it is that he hooks up to his computer. And when he's presenting, he uses Windows desktops. So he, I, I'm, I'm kind of slow, and he had to explain this to me twice and, and, and talk real slow. But he said he's got one desktop that is PowerPoint. And the external monitor, the USB monitor, is mirroring the same thing that's on the projector. So the USB monitor shows him what the audience sees. So when he's doing PowerPoints, he's got the slide up on that one that is the slide that they're seeing, but he's got the presenter mode on his laptop so he can see all of his notes and they can't see him. Okay, so we already do that, right? We already have the presenter mode, and then the, but here's where it gets super smart. So then when he goes and he does his demos, 
he switches to another desktop. Again, the external monitor is what the, the, the audience sees, but his built-in monitor has all of his code snippets. So now he's looking at it, and he can just copy and paste his code over. They can't see his code and all the junk around that. And he can, without having to look behind him to see where everything's at, he can see exactly what they're seeing in you know, Visual Studio Code or whatever. But it's the, the whole Windows desktop thing, so he doesn't have to worry about moving stuff around. and drag. He just tabs between them, and then it pops back over to PowerPoint. He keeps on going. And I'm like, that, that's brilliant. Once again, Bob's smarter than us. Once, once more, yeah. And then uh, a final thing, but this wasn't Bob's idea, but uh, I saw somebody else tweet this a couple of weeks ago, and, I, and I've added this. Windows 10 <laughs> has an option, and I'm not sure how long it's been there. Hell, it might have been there since Windows uh, 311. I don't know. But there is an option inside of Windows where if you hold the control key down, it will make a big, like, splash where your mouse cursor is. And so there's a number of times during the day or when I'm on my laptop or when I'm presenting in front of a bunch of people, I lose my mouse cursor. So you can turn this on, and then when you hold your control key down, when you let it up, it does this whole bloop and brings your eye exactly to where the mouse cursor is. So I turned that on. That's been incredibly helpful. Yeah, that's um, – like, that reminds me, reminds me of the old days when you could do, like, mouse trails. And you exactly. could do – as you accelerated, it would get bigger, right? That was another one of the tricks they did for that. So next iteration of that, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it works really well because it happens all the time, especially now that i got monitors everywhere. and just. Uh, yeah. That's the downside of the big, giant 38-inch monitor, right? There's a, lot of, there's a lot of screen to lose mouse on. A lot of places to, for that little guy to hide. Um, that's, uh, and you know what? So talking about presenting, though, it reminded me that basically these days, <laughs> I, like, I hate PowerPoint so much. I don't know if you guys ever realize that, but I really hate PowerPoint. I've quit even, like, turning it into – slideshow mode like if i have to show powerpoints i usually just do it right there from the the building experience right i kind of make the left side smaller but i just because like i want to do like want to show you like one thing and then go back to the demo right so it, right. it takes so long for windows to kind of flip over uh to slideshow mode i've just quit using slideshow mode for the most part yeah i'm not quite there yet but i can i can see for what you're doing why it makes good sense yeah i just yeah i i I hate PowerPoint. He does. <laughs> I can confirm. <laughs> Todd's been there. He's like, we need more slides. I'm like, no, we don't. We have one. That's enough. Stop. PowerPoint sucks. I won't go there. Uh, so for, for tech nerds like you and I, this week is CES, the Consumer Electronics Show out yeah. in Vegas. For my entire adult nerd life, I've always wanted to go to one just once. I've heard from everybody that's been there that it's a horrible experience. <laughs> but I, I would like to go once just to see all the fun stuff. And so I wanted to talk about a little bit, a couple of things that have come out uh, from the CES. So one of the things about CES to keep in mind is being gracious, half of the things that you see there never come out. Like it's just kind of a way for companies to dip their toe in the water and all that. So don't get too excited about the things that you see. But I did see a couple of things that, that caught my eye. Number one is this appears to be the year of the foldable PC. So, you know, Galaxy or Samsung had the Galaxy phone that, the, the fold that folded and they had to recall it because the screen was horrible. So a bunch of PC vendors have shown foldable PCs at this event. Uh, and I, and Microsoft did it with the surface Neo here, uh, whenever that came out, kind of showed the same thing that, that that's going to be coming out. They, I, I saw some specs on a couple, so I kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit because I, I don't know. I'm like, I love gadgets. I got stuff strung all over the foldable PC. I just haven't figured out exactly where it fits for me yet. So the first one I wanted to talk about is the Lenovo uh, X1 Fold device. And it is, when, you, when it's unfolded, when it's flat, it's 13.3 inches. It's got a 4 by, four, 4 by 3 aspect ratio, so almost square, but not quite square. 8 gig of RAM, a 1 terabyte uh, SSD, and it has um, a 5G network in it. So... As I was trying to figure out, like right now, the way that I that I am, for me to get something like that device, it screams of being like a travel device. So it would have to supplant something I already have. It would have to replace my laptop or the tablet that I use for. And I don't see it doing either yet. I don't see how I would justify that. Um, the other thing about it that makes it tough <laughs> is the price tag is yeah. a mere twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, so that's. Uh, that that's that's tough. Yeah, I, I'm with you. The price tag is ridiculous. Um, 
And, and you know, and I'm looking at the specs you posted here, you know, eight gigs of RAM. I, eight gigs of RAM is not enough to boot up Windows anymore, in my opinion. Well, I, I think you can get Windows going, but as soon as you open up a browser, then, you know, it's yeah. it's pretty bad. So yeah, that's, that's a weird thing for them to skimp on. Like, why? I mean, it would have cost them $12 more <laughs> to, you know, quadru quadruple the RAM, so... Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Having said that, my Surface Go, I think, also has 8 gig of RAM. And honestly, I don't feel like it's been that much of a hindrance to me. But that might just be because of what I do. It's just got a smaller screen. I run fewer things at a time. Yeah. I Speaking of traveling, though, I am still a huge fan of the Surface Laptop, too. I know there's a newer version out, but that I, that thing has been solid. So kudos to Microsoft. Yeah. Um, Dell released one, also the Dell Duo. So, so right now, Microsoft has released, you know, the, the, or hasn't released, but it's talked about the Neo. Lenovo's got the X1 Fold. Dell's got the Duo. Um, to, so everybody's trying. I don't know if this is going to go the way of 3D TVs, <laughs> yeah. but th there's got to be a killer app, or it's got to be able to completely replace another device before I would think about it. Yeah, I, I mean, what, do you think, th what is the target? Is it, is it the tablet, or is it the, P or is it the laptop that they, they think they're going to replace? I don't think they know yet. So the Dell Duo, so the, the, the Lenovo, from what I understand, when you flatten it out, is 13 inches. Okay. The Dell Duo is two 13-inch screens. So the Dell Duo seems to very squarely be going up against 13-inch laptops. It's got a, a magnetic keyboard <laughs> that'll sit on top of the bottom screen and is movable uh, so that you can actually kind of use it like a laptop. So I think that one is looking to be like a laptop the the lenovo if i understand it correctly is a smaller device so tablety uh, i don't know one of the things that i liked about the samsung uh, fold phone was it had the, the folding screens but when it was closed you could still there's a screen on the outside so you could still use it that way none of these devices are like that so to do anything with it you have to open it up to the big size and i'm just not sure um that I like that. So Jeff uh, put a quote from Lenovo that says they look at it as a laptop replacement. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it, so complete, not tangent, but going with that story a little bit, I definitely find it interesting that, you know, we do so much more with our phones these days, right? I feel like our phones, yeah. if anything, have become laptop replacements for a lot of traveling. Yeah. Um, and I am still surprised that, that hasn't revved, right? I mean, basically, we, you know, mobile phones, I mean, they've gotten faster, a little bit better, a little this, a little that, but basically, it's been the same device for 10 years now, I guess. I don't know, I even know when the, the first, you know, that type of usable phone first came out. And, you know, so kind of clawing at us here, a little this, a little that. I, I don't know where this all, uh, where this goes. So it's interesting. At least they're trying something new. Yeah, well, and Samsung has tried some of that. So the last two Samsung phones that I've had have a thing built in called DeX, which I can hook it up to a USB-C hub and use it like a computer, mouse, keyboard support, uh, all that. The problem with that is the infrastructure has to be there. So I can do it, and most of the apps work okay, but then I have to take all that stuff with me. Yep. So if if... if hotel rooms started having USB-C ports and, you know, offices started having that. If there was a way that I could do it that way, I think it would help. But right now I can do that, but then I have to have the screen and the keyboard and the mouse and it's just not there yet. Well, that's where I always thought was the idea that it should just be a laptop basically that you just dock your phone into, right? So the laptop's worthless until you pop the phone in and the phone becomes the brain of the laptop. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, because like, you know, so Nicola forever has been like, why don't you buy an iPad, right? Cause I do so much on my iPhone and I'm like, yeah. cause I'm, I'm happy with this, right? I, I, I don't need a bigger, I mean, I realize it would be the same thing, but bigger, but, but I'm just used to doing what I do on my phone. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's just interesting. Just a random thought the, the the lack of us doing things differently for a long time still. Yeah. Well, think, think of the big new thing. That's how you can make your, uh, your, your next fortune. I guess that's yeah. what else another, is Scott? Yeah. Another thing that, uh, that caught my eye being a traveler is Delta. The airline had a big booth at, uh, CES and talking about all the tech they're going to bring to the flying experience. 
No, I fly on Delta all the time. I think you still do, though. I think maybe not as much as you used to. Um, one of the big things that we were hoping to hear from them is that they were going to uh, announce that there's going to be free Wi-Fi for everybody on Delta flights. They still want to do that, but they haven't figured that out yet. Their Wi-Fi is not ready to handle everybody on the plane yet. But they, they have said they still want to do that. But they're adding a bunch of things to the experience. So one of the things that they're going to add, and I would I would benefit from this one, is they're going to add Bluetooth headphone support to the in-seat screens. Yep. So I use a pair of Bluetooth headphones to watch my content, and I don't ever watch their stuff because I don't want to fuss with the cord and all of that and trying to get all that stuff to work. Uh, so they're going to support the Bluetooth headset, which will it, be nice. Complete. Uh, so isn't there an adapter, though, that you can plug in that's the – is like a plug in the audio port that has a Bluetooth transceiver receiver. So you can do that yeah. without doing a wire. Is that, isn't that a thing? That's a thing. Yep. Uh, but it's just one more thing that I have to carry. And honestly, I just, you know, I, I, I never, so as excited as I am when I talk about this entertainment stuff, I never rely on it when I travel because I've been on enough flights where either the whole system was down or my screen was down that I can't imagine not being prepared with the content that I want and having to sit through an eight hour flight with nothing. Yeah. So um, I never trust their stuff. So the, the the Bluetooth headphone support will be great. They're going to add a binge button <laughs> so that if you're watching TV shows, you can just say, you know, fire up the Sopranos, binge, and then it just keeps going. That's That seems like a pretty small win. They're going to do a bunch of stuff with the app, the poorly named Fly Delta app, because it's <laughs> never where you expect it to be in your apps. Um, they're going to integrate Lyft with it so that you can... Uh, have a lift ride pick you up and take you to your airport and it'll figure all that out for you. Um, let you know when your boarding group is boarding so that you can hang out longer in the lounge. Their intention is that people won't get up early and crowd around the gate. There is zero chance that that will stop happening or even lessen, but bless them for trying to do that. Another thing that they're trying to do is make the in-flight entertainment. They're going to increase the amount of in-flight entertainment they have. And they're looking at trying to get the licenses so that it's available for you once you check in. So that check in with the app and then you can start watching your Soprano shows while you're sitting at the gate and then continue watching when you're on the plane. Uh, things like that. Well, yeah, those are uh, kudos to Delta, right? Well, as you point out, only 50% of this stuff will ever see the light of day, but, uh, but that's at least they're trying. Yeah. And I think uh, one of my favorite pieces is they talked about, they are also developing a, exoskeleton for their workers so they call it it's the, the guardian exo exoskeleton and essentially it will be an exoskeleton that their their uh, tarmac workers will be able to to suit into to help them move larger things around so you know suitcases and stuff like that i look forward to seeing that <laughs> the bionic man mm -hmm. yep nice. uh and then my favorite probably thing that's come out of that is samsung more big tvs can't have too many TVs. TVs can't be too big. I, I am, I'm going to be in, a t, in the TV market here in the spring, so you you be prepared with what I should buy. So. Yep. So they've got uh, big TVs, 8K TVs, uh, you know, bezel-less TVs. Uh, the ability apparently now that you can do this thing called the wall, where you can join multiple Samsung TVs together to cover an entire wall, and you know, have have content uh, that covers the whole wall up to 292 inches. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I know more and more people that have multiple TVs beside each other so they can watch two football games at a time. So, right? That'd be kind of cool if you then just say, well, merge the two. I just want to watch one game but on twice the screen. Yep. I've, I've done that a couple of times. I don't know that I would, you know. And somebody I was talking to, I think my brother in law was saying they just bought a new TV for one of the rooms in their house. And it's one of those that turns into a picture frame. So that when you shut it off, it doesn't go dark, it turns into a piece of art. Hmm. So I haven't seen it yet, but I'm curious what that looks like fancy yeah so what's uh what's new with you we got a, a couple of minutes left here um you know just talking about the playstation view stuff reminded me um for those game of thrones fans i i've been watching uh the witcher right that's the new one on netflix um how's that i'm at one and a half episodes in and it's pretty well done it's uh it's that, on our list yeah, yeah that it, it's so far i'm like this is this is good yeah. Um, so that one's good. <laughs> and then like three nights ago, we sat down and we want Nicole wanted to watch a movie for some reason. I'm like whatever. So we watched uh, Murder Mystery, right? Adam Sandler <laughs> and Jennifer Aniston, two of my favorite actors. Yep, yep. It might be worse than our podcast. 
It, so I've, uh, we watched it right after it came out, and I agree that the Oscar committee will not have any hard decisions to make about that movie. Uh, I didn't hate it as much as you did, but it, it, it was campy. It was cheesy. It was, yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> I, I counted. I laughed four times. <laughs> and, but, but, I mean, to their credit, I watched the whole thing because as I'm, I'm watching, I'm like, where's the joke? What, what, when are you guys, ha, ha, we off. were being dumb for, uh, it was so it, it was just that bad. I couldn't look away. I, oh, yeah. I I didn't mind it that much, but I I can see that. Now, have you watched uh, Six Underground yet? Uh-uh. So that's a Ryan Reynolds thing. So this was a made-for-Netflix movie. It's got a bunch of stars, Ryan Reynolds and all that. It was uh, directed by Michael Bay, who did all of the Transformers movies and movies with the like, bad boys and explosions and all that. Screen flares. Yes, uh, uh, lens flare. Yeah, lens flare. Sorry. Uh, yep. Uh, so that was that was pretty much exactly what I thought it would be. It was good. Uh, we enjoyed it. Yeah, but let's be clear. I mean, if you could make out with any dude, it would be Ryan Reynolds. You you love you love that dude so much. It's not even funny. Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, he's a talented man. That's all I'm gonna say. The amount of man crush you have for that dude is – so anytime you review anything that he's in, I just automatically assume that you're lying. Or not that you're lying because you believe it, but, but the, the, the rose-colored glasses. It's like when I ask your mom, hey, what do you think of Todd's new haircut? Right? I mean, I know <laughs> what the answer is. Yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good movie. It's exactly what I expected. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. You're getting to see Ryan Reynolds. That's exactly what you expected. <laughs> but cost you nothing to watch it. Fair enough. Uh, it, it, it was a good one. Uh, so, yes, lots of explosions. Jeff's seen uh, Six Underground. It's pretty good. There you go. I'll have to check that one. A lot of sparkly explosions. That's, that's well, well done there. Um, and then there is uh, – also, I'm, speaking of great masterpiece works that the Oscar committee should check out, um, I did a video on Power Apps delegation and that 500-item limit. So if you're working with Power Apps and you're tired of the little yellow triangle, that's why the silly signs above my head here. Um, then that's uh, the video for you. So, well, good. I see that it's gotten uh, a couple of thumbs up, a couple thousand uh, views, some comments. So, yeah, it looks like it may might not suck as much. Yeah, yeah that was that, that might be the fastest to a thousand video I ever did, um, which was interesting because I did it over holiday break. <laughs> hmm. so. so, it does look like you've been busy. Well, we're getting close uh, to, to wrapping this thing up. Um, so for community events, I think uh, I'm going to be at the SharePoint conference in May. I don't believe you're going to be joining me, are you? Not that I am aware of. No one has signed me up for anything that I don't know about recently. So. <laughs> but if you don't know about it, you might not know. That's so. why I was very clear, though. <laughs> not that I know of. So if you're going to be uh, going to be at the SharePoint conference, come find me. I'll be doing some sessions. I, I've forgotten exactly which ones. Of course, I bombarded them and gave them you know, 10 or 12 to choose from. Yeah, always a good time. I mean, if you're a SharePointy person, still absolutely go and uh, have fun. Yep. yep. Are you speaking to any user groups or anything uh, coming up? Um. So I'm doing App in a Day, which is a free Power Apps workshop that Microsoft puts on here in Cincinnati in January and February. So if you are looking into Power Apps, you want to get some free training. Microsoft putting that on App in a Day. Um, there is. I'm speaking remotely at the. Uh, Cambridge um, UK um, user group in February. So yeah, I got a whole bunch of random stuff coming up. I just like firmed it all up, but the, the app of the day stuff is definitely going on. So check that out. Yep. Uh, so Mark Anderson, uh, my, you know, Simpraxis uh, uh, boss, they're having a Teams Thursday in uh, Burlington, Mass. That's April 2nd. So you can go to teamsthursdayne.org. So it's going to be all about teams. So that's kind of the next uh, next big wave. Oh, that kind of sounds like terrible and fun all at the same time. Yep. He was telling me, and I think if, if you're uh, following Mark on Twitter, they're trying to find the teams equivalent of SharePoint. They're looking for names for the event and not having a lot of luck coming up with some clever, punny teams-themed SharePoint. It's a team turnip. I <laughs> tweet him out. Me, that might be the one that uh, that wins him over. Get turned, right? And all those weird things that people say. 
Uh, yeah. So that is all that I have for now. Do you have uh, have anything um, to I add? I think that's uh, all we've got. Um, I think we'll call it a day. All right. Well, chat room, I'll stick around for a little bit. I'll try to get these all produced. I'm getting, I think, a four behind now, so I need to, to get on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I will hopefully see you next week, and uh, we'll be in the chat room for a while. <laughs> so I'll see you guys there. Toodles. All right. I have an 11 o'clock, so I need to go potty and then uh, get ready for that. I know the feeling. Figured out what the wasn't too much banging. I only heard him hammering one time. So no, well after they took your internet out, that was uh... <laughs> jerks. <laughs> Talk to you later. See ya. Bye. Chat room. We can, we're without Todd. Say bye, Todd. <laughs>